Number 5. The Kromatorsk Radiological Accident This was a radiation accident that occurred in the city of Kromatorsk, Ukraine, and from 1980 until 1989. In 1989, a small capsule containing highly radioactive cesium-137 was found inside of a concrete wall of an apartment building with a gamma radiation exposure rate of 180 rads a year. It is not entirely certain where the capsule came from, but it was thought to be part of some complex measuring level. Over nine years, two families lived in the apartment, and by the time the capsule was discovered in 1989, Six residents of the building had died of leukemia, and 17 more had received varying doses of radiation. The capsule was only discovered after the residents of the building requested that the level of radiation be measured by a health physicist. Number 4. The 1996 San Juan de Dios radiotherapy accident. This accident occurred with a Alcyon 2 radiotherapy unit at the San Juan de Dio Hospital in San Jose, Costa Rica. The radiation source inside of the unit was changed by maintenance workers on August 22, 1996 after an accidental overexposure of a patient occurred. After the source was changed, the unit needed to be recalibrated and its exposure levels readjusted. But when this occurred, a mistake was made in calculating the dose rates, which led to severe overexposure of patients. The error of calibration wasn't discovered until December 27, 1997. In this course of time, 114 patients received an overdose of radiation and 13 died of radiation-related injuries. Number 3. The 1962 Mexico City Radiation Accident From March to August 1962, a 10-year-old boy took home an unprotected industrial radiography source. Four people died from overexposure to radiation from a cobalt-60 capsule, an industrial radiography source that was not contained inside of his proper shielding. Over the course of a few days, the boy kept the capsule inside of his pocket, then he placed it in the kitchen cabinet of his home in Mexico City. Having obtained the source on March 21st, the boy died 38 days later on April 29th. Subsequently, his mother died on July 10th, his two-year-old sister died on August the 18th, and his grandmother died on October the 15th. The boy's father also received a significant dose of radiation, however he survived. Five other people also received large overdoses of radiation. Number 2. Marie Curie, who lived from 1867 to 1934, was a Polish-French physicist and chemist. She was a pioneer in the early studies of radioactivity. She was the first person to become a two-time Nobel laureate and the only person with Nobel Prizes in both physics and chemistry. When she died at the age of 67 in 1934, it was found to be from a plastic anemia, which is a condition where your body cannot produce enough new blood cells due to damage in your bone marrow, which was caused by her massive overexposure to radiation during her work, which was usually carried out in a shed with no safety equipment to be found. The effects of radiation on living tissue was not clearly understood at the time, so she was known to carry around radioactive materials in small test tubes inside of her pockets or simply store them in her desk drawer. She was known to smile and talk nicely about the pretty blue light given off by the metals in the dark. Her papers and books from the 1890s are considered too dangerous to handle even today. Even her cookbook is highly radioactive and are kept inside of lead-lined boxes and those who wish to view them must wear protective clothing. Number 1. Eben Byers. Born in 1880 and died on March 31, 1932, he was a wealthy American socialite, an athlete, and an industrialist. He won the 1906 U.S. Amateur Golf Tournament, but his real fame came in the 1930s when he died from multiple radiation-induced cancers after consuming Radiothor, a popular patent medication made from radium dissolved into water. Wonderful. Due to his prominence, when he died it was relatively a public funeral and after his death the Wall Street Journal ran a headline reading, quote, The radium water worked fine until his jaw came off. <laughs> Excellent. His illness and eventual death also led to the heightened awareness of the dangers of ingesting radioactive materials and also to the increased powers of the FDA. William Bailey was never tried for Byers death, although the Federal Trade Commission issued an order against his businesses. None of this stopped Bailey from trading in radioactive cure-alls and gimmicks, though. He later founded a company called Radium Institute in New York and marketed a radioactive belt clip, 
a radioactive paperweight, and a mechanism which made water radioactive. Woohoo!